that move, okay. Hey! I create life! I know, right? An abomination. Mm -hmm. The Jovenel, bitch! Welcome to another episode of Why Your Blockbuster Failed, the series of videos looking at why a blockbuster film failed, whether that be critically, financially, or had a negative effect on future films. It's no secret that I love the Monsterverse series of films, and I think out of all the cinematic universes that have tried to emulate the MCU success, the Monsterverse is probably the best attempt at trying to recreate that type of storytelling with its first two films being critical and financial successes. However, Godzilla, King of Monsters, sits in a kind of middle ground. Whilst it was by no means a huge financial disappointment, it did definitely lose money. With a budget of somewhere between 170 to 200 million, the film managed to gross 386 million dollars, which means it more than likely lost around 20 to 50 million dollars compared to 2014's Godzilla, which managed to gross $529 million worldwide on a slightly smaller budget, and 2017's Kong Skull Island, managing to gross $585 million worldwide, and again on a very similar budget to Godzilla. What's more concerning for Godzilla King of Monsters is its domestic weekend opening, to a disappointing $49 million domestically almost half of 2014's Godzilla and behind even 2017's Kong Skull Island, which points to a definite disinterest in the franchise. And whilst it appears there is renewed interest in Godzilla vs Kong, which might save the franchise, it's unlikely we will know just how well this film performed due to its straight to video release and also considering with the Snyder Cut being released one week earlier, so being able to quantify new customers to HBO Max who came for Godzilla vs Kong will be difficult. So I thought why not bring back my series Why Your Blockbuster Failed and try to explain how Godzilla King of Monsters failed despite coming after two highly successful films. A big part as to why Godzilla and Kong succeeded financially is the fact they cast well-known, recognisable stars in both films. 2014's Godzilla marketing heavily pushed the fact Brian Cranston was in this film. Now you may think Cranston isn't much of a box office draw, and that is true today, as his career slows down, but back in 2014 Cranston was maybe one of the biggest actors working in Hollywood. Having just finished Breaking Bad, Cranston was the actor everyone had heard of and was in the public's mind having built up so much fan support. Using Cranston in the marketing was enough to sell the Godzilla film, despite the fact he isn't even the main character. Kong Skull Island had even more stars and up and coming stars with the inclusion of Tom Hiddleston, Brie Larson, Samuel Jackson and John Goodman. Hiddleston already having starred in a few MCU films which have all been box office successes, Brie Larson was fresh off the acclaimed drama Room and had just been cast as Captain Marvel and of course Samuel Jackson has been a box office draw for much of his life. Godzilla King of Monsters main cast members are Kyle Chandler, Vera Famaga and Millie Bobby Brown. Kyle Chandler who at this point had never led a Hollywood film and his highest grossing film is Wolf of Wall Street at $390 million and Chandler doesn't even particularly play a large role in that film anyway. Famiga again is an actor who has never had major box office successes while she has led many films, usually smaller independent films. Her highest grossing film worldwide was The Conjuring at $318 million, until Godzilla King of Monsters beat that. And lastly we have Millie Bobby Brown, who of course stars in the highly successful Stranger Things, but had yet to appear in a film, except for 2018's Fear, except for 2018's Sphere. I think this was the filmmaker's attempt at getting an up and coming star who had recently starred in something to bring in younger fans, similar to Aaron Taylor Johnson, who had just come off Kick-Ass. This was the filmmaker's attempt at getting an up and coming star who had recently starred in something to bring in younger fans, similar to the casting of Aaron Taylor Johnson, Brian Cranston and Tom Hiddleston, who had all starred in major productions prior to Godzilla and Kong, and had enjoyed critical and financial success. However, this tactic didn't work out. With no recognisable stars, general audiences were just not interested in seeing this film. 
Cole Chandler and Vera Farmiga don't have big fan bases that would draw on many audiences. And Millie Bobby Brown is still very up and coming and has only ever starred in a couple of series of Stranger Things, so has yet to build big enough fan support to draw people into a cinema. Without this star power, these actors could not carry a $200 million blockbuster film, which definitely contributed to the film's lacklustre box office takings. Whilst the design of Godzilla, and for that fact all the monsters in these films, has been fantastic as well as the majority of their fight scenes being interesting and encapsulating, a common criticism of the Monsterverse films is the engaging human characters. Basically all of the characters within the Monsterverse films are incredibly one dimensional and stereotypical movie characters. You have the action hero type who will do anything to save their family. This will be your lead and be a handsome action star. You have the scientist who only exists in these films to spout expository dialogue. And then usually the cast is rounded off with a female character who is either the wife or love interest of our main character and will have a small part within the plot to play. When your characters have no edge or backstory, it's very hard for audiences to continue to go to these films and connect to these characters. The main characters of these films are a giant lizard and a gorilla, so the screenwriters need to write some engaging, two-dimensional human characters for the audience to invest in and care about. Otherwise, why would you come back to these films if you don't care where these characters are going? I mean, with the release of Godzilla vs Kong, do we really care about how Dr. Mark Russell's story concludes? And I bet you don't even know who Dr. Mark Russell is. It's this guy. And of course, yes, these films are about giant monsters. The human characters do not need to be nuanced or complex characters who have loads of issues, but they do need some extra layers outside the usual monster slash action style ex character building because let's be honest, once you've seen one of these films, you've seen them all. Audiences aren't massively interested in Return to see Godzilla because it isn't a character driven story and you don't really care where he ends up because the audience aren't going to connect with a fucking nuclear lizard. Please do not get me mistaken, I love these films and for all its faults I actually like Godzilla King of Monsters but let's all calm down and be honest with ourselves. Once you've seen one of these films, you've kind of basically seen them all. The plots to all these films play out like this. The title name Big Monster shows up, followed by an equally big or even larger monster. They fight each other, throw some punches. It looks like our title monster is going to lose until they pluck up the courage to say, no, this is my film and I will win this fight. The problem is, when you are dealing with your main characters being creatures without any personality and a limited power set, it's hard to do anything different or stray from this formula. You are unable to make films which are character driven because that would take away focus from the title character. And when you do focus on the title character, well, there is not many places you can take it. For example, many people might say superhero films are all the same. And while yes, the majority of superhero films follow the same basic pattern, these films are open to changing things up. This could be done through power sets of characters, with having them do various fight moves which makes fight scenes more engaging compared to just watching monsters sock each other in the face, and occasionally breathe a nuclear blast on them, or you can have character driven stories with superheroes which dives more into the mentality of being a hero, looking at their demons, their regrets and their ultimate goals. With the characters of Godzilla and King Kong, you are unable to do this because you know they are big monsters without personalities, who just want to punch each other until one of them doesn't get up. The point is, it is hard for general audience members to get excited for a monster film which they know will probably be very similar to what they've seen before. It will just be big monsters punching and destroying a city. There's just nothing much interesting to do with them. And do people really care about the story of Godzilla? I can't wait for Godzilla vs Kong, and probably at the time of the release of this video, I would have already seen it. From the look of the reviews, people are saying that this film is pretty good and is just balls to the wall action, which is unapologetically a massive crazy monster film. And that is exactly what these films should be. It's just this cinematic universe cannot last due to the nature of the formula of monster films. There are a multitude of reasons why Godzilla 
King of Monsters failed. It was the major reason being it was Godzilla not fighting a big name. Because of this, the film came off generic and pointless. To be honest, there's not much you can do with these monsters unless they fight each other because they are the names and the box office draw. Without that, the film has become generic, very samey, and they're just not going to draw in the big numbers. But, like most people, I am extremely excited for Godzilla vs Kong, and I for one cannot wait to watch it. As always, thank you for watching this video.